Welcome back. We turn now to the challenger in the Republican primary for attorney general. David Levitt is currently the Utah County attorney hoping to unseat Sean Reyes. David, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So you're the Utah County attorney now, but tell us a little bit more about your background and qualifications. Well, I've been practicing law for nearly 30 years, uh, virtually all of that in the criminal justice system. Uh, I've spent roughly 10 years as a criminal defense attorney, 10 years as a, an elected prosecutor, both in Juab County and in Utah County. And I've spent 10-ish uh, years as a legal reformer in the former Soviet Union, helping the countries of the former Soviet Union really uh, attain a criminal justice system that's similar to ours. And so I, I have a, a, a broad background of experience in criminal justice. I've also been a city attorney to four different cities and then the civil advisor to Utah County and Juab County. All right, now uh, you know as well as anyone else it's more difficult to run against an incumbent than for an open seat. So why did you make the decision to go for this seat given that there is an incumbent uh, running again as well? You know, I left the criminal justice system and politics in general about 10, 10 or 12 years ago. Uh, quite frankly, I left because uh, I was fed up with a system that I didn't really quite feel empowered to be able to change, and so I went to Eastern Europe and began my work over there. Uh, in 2018, when I ran for Utah County Attorney, I ran because I understood that our criminal justice system is so entirely broken that someone uh, with, an, with enough understanding and enough experience in criminal justice needs to stand up and, and, and take that on. I, and, and, and so I, I ran in Utah County, uh, won a resounding victory in the, in, the, in the Republican primary by 18 points with Utah's arguably most conservative voters uh, saying, yes, we need criminal justice reform in Utah County. I'm running for, U for Utah Attorney General because uh, my efforts in reforming Utah County need to occur statewide. And quite frankly, I haven't been satisfied with our efforts at reforming the criminal justice system. And so I looked at this and said, you know what? Uh, win, lose, or draw, this is a great, a great opportunity for me to advance the message about the need for criminal justice reform, not only in the state of Utah, but in America. Okay, let's get into that a little more. Specifically, what do you mean by that? What are you looking at, and what would you do if you were elected as the AG? Well, we have to, we have to look at history uh, and, and understand that our founders gave us a legislative branch to, to make laws, an executive branch to, tell it, or to enforce those laws, and, and a judiciary to keep the, those two in harmony. One power that the founders never gave government was the power to determine the guilt or innocence of a fellow citizen, to take away a fellow citizen's liberty. They retained that power to themselves through the jury trial. Well, over the course of, the, uh, of, uh, of our nation's history, we have replaced the jury trial with the plea bargain. And today, instead of people deciding the guilt or innocence of fellow human beings or fellow citizens, Prosecutors give plea bargains in exchange for guilty pleas, and that happens 99% of the time in, in, in criminal cases, which should, which should scare everyone when we, when we realize that 99 times out of 100, the prosecuting attorney or the government doesn't have to prove the allegations that he, he or she makes. So with Utah uh, County as an example, how have you changed that then? Well, I've, I've redesigned our screening process and, and, and redesigned really what we charge, how we charge, and we've, we've gone about it in a way to say, listen, we need to look at the crimes that, that hurt people rather than just charging uh, you know, every crime that we see and, and clogging our court systems and, 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 and jailing nonviolent offenders. We, we've reduced the incarceration rate for the nonviolent. We all know that the, that the violent and the dangerous, they deserve to be in prison. But that's only 10 percent of our violent, uh, of our offenders in the in the criminal justice system. 90 percent of our criminal justice uh, pr uh, participants are not violent, and so we have found different solutions to help them pay their debt to society, without filling our jails. We've also then redesigned how we charge crime so that we can have more jury trials and fewer plea bargains, because we've got to be able to figure out a way to do this without costing the government more money. I want to get your thoughts on a uh, very big topic right now, and that is police reform all across the country. Of course, we all watched uh, recent events, and uh, that now has become a big topic. So as potentially the state's top law enforcement officer, do you believe there is systemic racism within police organizations and that changes need to be made? I believe that there is implicit bias in every walk of life. I, I, I think it's unfair to single out uh, the police or to single out any other organization, we all can do better. 
we all need to understand that that implicit bias, whether it be racism or whether it be based on gender or sexual orientation or anything else, uh, implicit bias is something that divides us as a community. Now, police reform is part and parcel with with reforming the criminal justice system, and and and, and, it's, and it is because of this. The, the relationship between the prosecuting attorneys and the police needs to be one of respect, but there needs to be a healthy tension because it is the prosecuting attorney, the county attorneys in the counties, and the attorney general for the state that, that, that holds the police accountable for their actions. And it's a delicate balance because we need our police, and, and, and they sacrifice so much for us, uh, as do their families. But we need to understand that the role of the attorney general is not to be part of some police club, the, the role of the Attorney General is to be the ultimate check and balance on law enforcement, and that's just not occurring like it needs to be with our Attorney General. I'd like to get your thoughts on the Affordable Care Act. Uh, Utah is one state, part of a uh, multi-state lawsuit uh, to end it. Would you continue that lawsuit if you were elected Attorney General? Well, you know, uh, we have to understand that Health care is something that everyone needs to be able to have. No civilized country in, on, on earth fails to take to adequately care for its people, and, and, and health care is one of them. The, the answer of the uh, Affordable Care Act is to say, let's, let's create more socialized medicine. I oppose socialized medicine. I believe that the, that, the, that the answers will be better found in the private sector. However, I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to throw to, 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 to throw something out when we don't have something in its place to, to take its place. Really what that tells me is that we're going to have uh, a lot more uninsured people while we're trying to find a solution. I think we need to find the solution first and then, and then see if we can make that work. But to me, uh, while it's an important issue, we're going to have from June or from July 1st until the election day, whoever the, 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 the remaining candidates are, to discuss that. The real issue here is reforming the criminal justice system because that really is what's destroying America. It's, it really is the issue of our generation, is getting our criminal justice system under control. I would like to get your thoughts on one other controversial topic, and that being Banjo, and the use of virtual reality software. Do you believe that has a place in law enforcement, and do you approve of how it's been used to this point? Well, well first off, the whole, the whole Banjo controversy has many, many areas of concern for me. Uh, Primarily, how in the world did uh, the, the Attorney General's office go through a process where they awarded a nearly $21 million contract without bid, without request for proposals, and gave it to simply one hand-picked person that the Attorney General happened to have a good relationship with? Uh, I think that's problematic. We, we don't know the safeguards. We don't know how privacy was protected. And listen, technology is critical in, in keeping our society safe. But we can't sacrifice our liberties. And so I, I, I think that Banjo was ill-conceived as far as getting into it as quickly as it did. I think it was ill-conceived with regard to the lack of transparency. And, and while we need technology and law enforcement, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something okay. because our liberties are really what are at stake. All right, we have about 30 seconds left. What is your pitch to Republican primary voters? Why should they go with you on June 30th? Our criminal justice system, is, uh, reforming our criminal justice system is the issue of our generation. I've been speaking about this for years now. I'm, I'm, I, the American Bar Association lists me as one of six prosecutors in America most likely to reform the criminal justice system. If you're interested in criminal justice reform, then you need to vote for me, David Levitt, because I'm doing it in Utah County and I'll do it all across this state. And what's a website where our viewers can learn more about you? davidlevitt.com. We hope you'll go there. We've got lots of, lots of informative videos and lots of information. Please go there, davidlevitt.com. All right. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity.